Welcome to our Prairie Farm Report on Crop Profiles. I'm your host, Bill Wilson. Oftentimes, grain land and pasture land like this becomes totally unproductive because of a high salt content in the topsoil. But plant breeders have come up with a new variety of grass that seems to be doing very well in saline soils. Ken Miller's family has been farming this land near the southern Alberta town of Milk River for over 100 years. Miller and his wife Mary took over the family farm in the mid-1970s and have been gradually making improvements to it ever since. They've been in the seed business for over 30 years. Their experience with salinity problems motivated them to become licensed growers of A.C. Saltlander and they planted their first bag of breeder's seed in 2004. The plant itself um, is a, a natural hybrid then between uh, quack grass and uh, blue bunch wheatgrass and has a lot of the characteristics of quack grass so it's uh, waist high, uh, predominantly uh, wheatgrass, looks like intermediate wheatgrass and uh, its main uh, defining characteristic is that it has been selected very carefully and over a number of generations for uh, tolerance to saline conditions. So it is, uh, will um, grow well in an area that supports our, where, where foxtail barley, kochia, and um, uh, plants like that uh, currently exist. From that first bag of seed, they have expanded to where they now grow about 700 acres of AC Saltlander. Miller expects to get three crops of seed from this irrigated field. It was established two years ago uh, and harvested first a uh, year ago. And this is its second uh, production year. They're always the best. We're hoping to get up towards that 300 pound an acre uh, uh, yield with this year. And it, it largely depended on the weather that we get at pollination time. It just loves uh, hot, dry days like this in uh, high 80s or low 90s, low humidity and uh, bitter breeze. Here, the, these plants uh, where the uh, uh, spikelets are pulling away from the, the, the main stem are within uh, four or five days of beginning to pollinate. Here we see an example of how AC Saltlander can be used in reclamation work. The salinity on this field used to be so bad that about 20 acres of it wasn't worth farming anymore. But then they planted a mixture of grasses including an older relative of saltlander. As soon as they had enough seed they put in some saltlander as well. And that area is immediately behind us. And in this last 10 years because of uh, lowering the water table uh, we have been able to shrink the size of that salinized land down to four or five acres now and you'll see that uh, there are um, some species moving in on it now that are a, a bit of foxtail but some false alkali grass uh, there's some uh, tall fescue across the way that has a purple color to it we have um, a couple of years ago seeded around these salinized areas with a saltlander mixture and where we're standing right now had been white for 10, 20 years, something like that. So we're uh, doing the job of reclaiming this land at a reasonable cost. Miller says if you have a five acre saline problem, for example, you should seed at least 10 acres of saltlander to allow it to thoroughly dry up the whole area. The crop spreads by rhizomes, so it grows very aggressively and chokes out most weeds. We destroyed the foxtail barley and got some more saltlander going in the perimeter areas. But that is uh, moving in, it, it uh, encroaches on the salinity by a foot or two a year. He says when used as a forage crop, saltlander should be productive for significantly longer than other grasses, such as smooth brome. Scientists at the nearby Swift Current Research Station are in the middle of trials looking at saltlander's nutritional value. And I believe that they have found that the, uh, the gains per day and the gains per acre are very slightly better uh, on, with saltlander than, uh, than smooth brome. But of course, those are in 
um, non-saline conditions. So where it's salinized, the difference would be more, far more dramatic. Salt lander should be seeded in spring for optimal weed control, but if saline areas are too muddy and wet at that time, it's also possible to get a good catch with dormant seeding in October or November. Miller says salt lander performs well in a pasture situation. Another of this uh, salt lander's uh, assets are it has a very low growth point so that uh, cattle can graze it off close to the ground and it will recover or, or regrow back. Uh, some some uh, particularly intermediate wheatgrass or smooth brome don't do that. So that's a useful uh, attribute and as long as there's moisture in the soil profile, even in late September, the salt lander will regrow and uh, produce new, new leaves. Miller says after this crop is harvested for seed, he expects the forage to produce about three tons per acre. For those interested in more information on AC Saltlander, he suggests a visit to millerseeds.com.